each of you and welcome. Thank you for joining us here at St. Luke Church as our parish celebrates the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. We're especially grateful that you are with us in prayer to support one another during these very challenging days for our families and our world. In order that we may foster a spirit of prayer and reverence during our worship, we respectfully ask you to make sure that your electronic devices are turned off. We will be praying together in a special way at this Mass for all of you, our parishioners, and Deacon Lance Fredericks, Thomas Teresi, Maria Cellini, and Olga Grabowski. And now, let us join together in prayer to praise our Heavenly Father through the Lord Jesus, who has called each of us to follow him in hope as his disciples. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, the good news of your kingdom fulfill the hopes of all the people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And on this last Sunday before Lent begins, we especially offer our praise to God, saying glory to God, God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, 
O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place pleasing to you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare. He shall muffle his beard and cry out, Unclean! Unclean! As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or the Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, so that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Someone being labeled as a leper, 
whether the contagion was real or just presumed to be so, and God help you if the rabbi in town did not like you. For instance, I've always been subject to this sort of thing during the winter time where, you know, my, my skin starts to itch and even the slightest scratch because the skin has grown fragile. Um, it, it, it can lead to bleeding and stuff like that. Winter eczema, my dermatologist told me. And like the commercial, eczema, eczema, seborrhea, and the heartbreak of psoriasis. There's lupus, there's shingles, for which I have not gotten one of my two injections. Acne, razor burn, anything that would look abnormal on your skin. All of these could be liable to making a person declare unclean. And in Jesus' time, naturally, medical knowledge was in an extremely primitive state compared to today. But moreover, the diagnosis, the diagnosis of tzarat was made not by a doctor, but by a rabbi. Diagnosis did not distinguish between different kinds of skin disease and conditions. It included both the deadly and the incurable and the non-fatal, comparatively harmless things that all came together underneath one all-inclusive title. Sarat, unclean, also applied to other things. Even objects could be labeled as unclean. Thereby, if you came in contact with them, you would be labeled unclean if you had any contact with them. Your clothing. Any kind of mold or mildew that might be growing on a damp cloth. Your house, dry rot in the wood, mildew, or in our area, lichen growing on a cool, damp wall. Look at your brick chimneys. Do you see efflorescence? Your brick houses where the, the, the it seems to be this white powder growing on the outside. Unclean. Unclean. Consider some other modern possibilities. Your shower stall hasn't seen any tie lights in a couple of weeks. And little spots of black begin to show up. Your refrigerator, with the mildew on the edge of that door gasket, or the green, hairy stuff in the Tupperware container that has been at the back of the bottom shelf of your refrigerator since Thanksgiving. All of that stuff. In any case, whether it was a real disease or not, even with some concerns about public health, the Mosaic Law listed 61 different contacts which could defile, and the defilement involved in contact with a leper was second only to defilement involved in contact with a dead body. Any such sarat made an innocent person unclean, whether they were aware of it or not. But it was up to the rabbi, the religious authority, to say. So being declared unclean was not so much a diagnosis of a disease as it was a question of religious worthiness. Is this person worthy or unworthy to be part of God's people in worship and in daily life. If not, such a person was banished from contact and fellowship with others. 
had to live alone outside the camp, outside the village, had to go around with torn clothing, bare head, and probably worst of all, as he went along, he had to give warning of his polluted presence by calling out, unclean, unclean. Can you imagine somebody with some of our modern day identified diseases having to walk down Fifth Avenue in New York yelling out unclean, unclean because they have herpes, because they have HIV, because they have any other thing, and now in our day, because they might have had a positive contact with COVID. If a leper in Jesus' day so much as crossed the threshold of somebody else's house, that house became unclean, even to the dirt floor, to the roof beams. Even in an open place, it was illegal even to greet a leper. And no one could come nearer to a leper than four cubits. Okay, a cubit is 18 inches, six feet, right? Unsocial distancing in biblical times, 2,000 years before COVID, stay six feet apart. Even if the wind was blowing, if you were downwind from a wind that was blowing past a leper, the leper had to stand a hundred cubits. 50 feet away. The story is told of one religious person who would not even eat an egg brought, bought in a street where a leper had passed by. They were so freaked out by this stuff that they feared everyone and everything if there was a so-called leper around. Another person actually boasted that he threw stones at lepers to keep them away. And others hid themselves and ran off at the sight of someone who was declared unclean. Now, things did not get better in the Middle Ages. The priest, wearing his stole and carrying a crucifix, would lead the leper into the church and do a funeral ritual over him or her. The leper was a person who was considered already dead, even though he or she was still alive. Such a person had to live in a leper house and wear a black garment that all might recognize, an obviously and continuing sign of shame. Such a person might not come into a church service while the service was going on, but might be able to watch it through a little slit cut in the wall. And they call that the leper squint. And maybe catch some glimpse of the ritual that was going on. The bottom line, the leper not only had to bear the physical pain of the disease, if it was in fact a real disease, he had to suffer the mental anguish and the heartbreak of being completely banished from human society and totally shunned. Most telling quote that I've read on this is that the leper was hated by others until the leper came to hate himself. That's what leprosy was all about. And that is the kind of man that came to Jesus. Realizing all of that, it is scandalous, absolutely scandalous for Mark to say that Jesus deliberately touched the medical knowledge of the day would have said that Jesus was running a desperate risk of a ghastly infection, but Jesus reached out and touched him. 
What does this mean for us? Notice again that some of the reasons for being designated leprously unclean in the time of Jesus may have sounded trivial to us or even incredibly unfair or unjust. But think about this. Who are the untouchables in our world? People at work. People in school, people in the marketplace who are avoided or demeaned or bullied. Think of some of the designations that have been applied to people to distinguish them one from another. Protestant and Catholic, Irish and French. A colleague of mine was a pastor of a double parish up in Worcester, Massachusetts. There's no R in Worcester. There's no R in Massachusetts. There was a parish built by the Irish on one corner of a shared big, huge parking lot, and another one built by the French. And as one built the church, uh, after the other had already established one, there was a competition about whose steeple was higher than the other. Who was better than the other? And there was a constant tension between the two communities. In New York, there was an article once about those men who have held the office of Archbishop of New York and how the only one, one who wasn't Irish, but rather French, was totally scorned. And it is said that the only time that Bishop Dubois got what he wanted was when they buried him under the sidewalk in front of old St. Patrick's Cathedral so that people could walk over him in death as they had in life. Hmm? Unclean. You know all the you know all the polarities. Democrat, Republican, Tea Party, Independent, and a whole bunch of virtually unknown parties that are at the bottom line of the ballot that nobody ever looks at. And there's black, and there's white, and Latino, and scores of others. An article about the census that I read said that there's six categories and 63 possible combinations for people to designate their race. And they spoke of one family having an African-American Latino Seder at Passover. Think about that combination an African-American Latino Seder at Passover. And beyond those, the newspaper and our own experience have brought us the stories about, and from the second reading, Jew and Greek, right? Well, there's Jew and Arab, there's freaks and geeks and jocks, there's LGBTQ, that, 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 whatever other initials they might put on the end of that, and people who are straight, there's the, uh, you know, the, the enemy on one side of a war and the other side of the war. There's native born and there's foreigners. There's people who are healthy and people who have some kind of disease. There's people who are pro-democracy and pro-communist and pro-socialist. There's people who are pro-life and pro-choice and white supremacists and everybody else and everything in between. Where do you sort it all out? Where do you sort it all out? And over the years, thousands of other such opposing pairs by which certain people are virtually made non-persons. Remember George Orwell's 1984? I gotta dig out my copy of that from high school years and read that again. 1984, at the time that George Orwell wrote it, was decades in the future. Now it's 37 years in the past. And 
we still hold some people or groups of people to be virtual non-persons. So the bottom line once again, while all of these designations are complex in their origins and in the issues that surround them, they still, they still almost inconceivably become the basis by which whole groups of people are designated as unclean or unworthy to others. And these labels become the source of intense hatred among peoples, both the ones who consider themselves to be right and who consider themselves to be right. You know, good old our side versus mean old their side. Physical disease might not be involved. But these are just some of the people who are seen and feared and treated as lepers by their counterparts. I can't even go so far as to say they're brother and sister human beings because it seems that brotherhood and sisterhood, as much as we might sing it in a song like Let Peace Begin With Me, Sometimes not there. So what do you think? Would Jesus touch those others that we consider non-persons? That we consider less than us because they are different from us? Notice what the leper says to Jesus. This is the most poignant line in this gospel that we heard. If you choose to do so, you can make me clean. The leper is in essence saying, everybody else has kicked me to the side of the road. If you choose to do so, and I trust you to do so, you can help me back up onto the road. Also notice that what happens is more than just physical healing. When Jesus sends him off to do what was prescribed by the Mosaic law, go show yourselves to the priests. He's helping this former leper regain his human dignity, to re-enter the society that kicked him to the side of the road. All the animosities and all the hatreds and the politics and the religious fervors and the economics and all the everything else that makes some people untouchable in our minds and in our sight. All those things come down to a matter of how we choose. If you choose to do so, how we choose to see those others. And there's the biggest challenge to us. Many times, the difference between clean and unclean is a matter of choice. How we choose to see and whom we choose to touch. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord was attentive to the needs of the leper who asked him to make him clean. Let us now offer our needs up to God, knowing that God is attentive to our concerns. For our church, that inspired by Jesus' example, we may respond with compassion and inclusion to those who are excluded, alienated, or alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those entrusted with authority here and around the world, that they may always keep in mind the effects of their decisions on all the citizens in their care. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord our prayer. for all our sisters and brothers who are suffering from skin diseases and other illnesses that are disfiguring or unsightly, that they may experience comfort, healing, and sincere compassion from God's people. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. for prisoners, particularly those who suffer from physical or mental illnesses, that they may not lose hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our prayer. For people who may feel uncomfortable around those whom society rejects, that the example of Jesus and the leper may lead to a warming of heart and an openness to greater compassion and care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our prayer. For all of you, our parishioners, and for Deacon Lance Fredericks, Thomas Trevisi, Maria Cellini, Olga Gwiewalski, for whom we pray in a special way in our Masses this weekend, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Linda Licata, Mary Patricia Rin, and all those who have lost their lives in the pandemic. For those who are ill, especially Armando Fushanti, Frank Hendrickson, Janice Price, Anna Hutter, Nancy McCracken, Christine Carasone, and all who suffer from the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve us in the armed forces and in health care, and all who put themselves in harm's way on our behalf each day, and for the needs we now remember in the silence of our hearts. For these two, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all hopefulness, we turn to you in confidence, not only that you are attentive to our prayers, but also that we are always in your loving care. Graciously grant these and all our prayers through your Son, Christ Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Please pray with me now that our gifts will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this offering, O Lord, we pray, pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we now acclaim. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles, the Martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and power is yours forever and ever. Amen.
Let us stand and conclude our prayer with thanks to Having fed on these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Ash Wednesday services will remain as they have been in the past years. Uh, masses at 8 a.m. and 12.15 p.m. Prayer services at 4 and 5.30 p.m. And an evening service of prayer for the liturgy of the hours at 7.30 p.m. Obviously, ashes are given out at all uh, of these uh, times. And because of COVID precautions, ashes will be given only by the use of individual cotton swabs. We had a choice to make. The Rome gave us two possibilities. That of like sprinkling ashes on the top of your head, or by using some intermediate means like cotton balls or Q-tips to mark your foreheads. Okay, So you might not get a big black smear of ashes as in the past, but we, Father Kumar and I felt that it was important to engage that element of touch where you could feel the cross being marked on your foreheads as you came forward for ashes. So that's what we're going to do here. And um, so please consider joining our parishioners also who make grab and go meals for the homeless, especially during this time of Lent. And you can contact Jean Stewart for more information. And we also extend our thanks to all who continue to donate to our food tables in the hallway by the Robertson. We have no idea how much good use is made of what is brought and uh, the good things that it does for people who are in need. So please check our flock note emails to you for more information on all the opportunities for prayer learning and service that we will offer throughout the Lenten season. And we are working on having a, uh, a, a virtual YouTube version of Stations of the Cross with our beautifully refurbished uh, images there. And uh, you'll be able to find that on our parish YouTube page. Please join now in the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Lord, our angel, defend us in battle. Be our defense, defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl up the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. I hope it hasn't started to get mucky and yucky and icy in here. Spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.